Between the end of World War II and the beginning of the 1980s, the Soviet Union polarized the dispute for world hegemony with the United States. During this period, the Soviet government guaranteed to provide basic rights to the population, such as access to education and health care, and promoted industrialization and scientific research. From the 1970s onwards, however, this highly bureaucratic society with a nationalized economy began to show signs of exhaustion. One of the reasons for this weakening was the bureaucracy's control of the economy with targets for all productive sectors. In this way, the Soviet government established what factories should produce and in what quantity, where raw materials should be purchased, what the final price of the products would be, the wages of workers, etc. As there was no competition, manufacturers were not concerned with improving the quality of goods or offering a wide variety of consumer goods. Thus, in the 1970s, Soviet industries did not keep up with the technological improvement of developed capitalist countries in areas such as information technology, microelectronics, biotechnology, and telecommunications. In times of the Cold War, the USSR preferred to allocate more resources to the expansion of the war industry to face the United States. All these factors added together to put the Soviet economy on the brink of collapse. Unable to meet production targets set by the government, the factories used false statistics. Thus, while official data showed advances in the production of goods, stores and markets were often empty even without basic products. The crisis also affected basic industries which proved to be outdated and inefficient. In the countryside, agricultural crops did not guarantee the population's livelihood, which led the government to import food. In addition, there was widespread corruption in the government and in the Communist Party, the only one authorized to operate. The huge expenditures to keep troops in Afghanistan also contributed to the crisis. The Soviets would see economic, political and social transformations with the rise of Mikhail Gorbachev to power in 1985. He proposed a plan known as Perestroika, with the aim of decentralizing the economy and ensuring the resumption of its growth. The plan started with a cut of resources destined to the arms industry and with some demilitarization agreements signed with the US government. It was also decided to withdraw Soviet troops from Afghanistan in early 1989. Subsidies to companies were cut and the market began to regulate the price of goods and services. Multinationals began to settle in the Soviet Union, the stock exchange was reopened and many private stores began to function. The Soviets came into contact with global consumer market items such as imported clothing and fast food restaurant chains. Political opening, on the other hand, took place through a set of measures known as Glasnost. Political prisoners were released, censorship was abolished, and multi-partyism was established. In Eastern Europe, the satisfaction also increased. In 1980, in Poland, shipyard workers in Gdansk started a strike that spread to other sections of the working class across the country. They protested against the appalling working conditions and demanded the right to organize themselves into unions free from government influence. Thus, the Solidarity Union emerged, an entity led by Vlach Balisa. In a short time, the demands expanded against censorship, the lack of freedom and the scarcity of food for the end of the one-party system for the freedom of union organization. With his reforms, Gorbachev stimulated the liberalization of the regime also in Eastern European countries under Soviet influence. As a result, a wave of pro-democracy demonstrations spread across the region between 1988 and 1990. In general, the opening process was peaceful. Its main milestone was the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. In 1990, Germany was reunified. Three years later, Czechoslovakia peacefully split into two countries, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. One of the few communist regimes that fell violently was from Romania. Another particular case was Yugoslavia, a federation formed by six republics, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Macedonia, and Montenegro. Between 1945 and 1980, the country was ruled by Marshal Tito, a communist leader who led the resistance 
against Nazism. His authority ensured the union of an ethnically and religiously diverse population under a single state. After Tito's death in 1980, differences between the various republics surfaced. In 1991, when Croatia and Slovenia announced their independence, Serbian president Lobodan Milosevic declared war on them. The conflict ended in 1992 after UN peacekeepers secured the emancipation of the two republics. In 1991, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Macedonia announced their emancipation. The Serb minority living in Bosnia did not agree, and in 1992, troops sent by the Milosevic government took over the country. More than 200,000 Bosnian Muslims were killed in a massive operation known as ethnic cleansing. The war ended in 1995 when UN military forces forced the Milosevic government to withdraw its troops from Bosnia. Yugoslavia was restricted to Serbia and Montenegro. In 1997, Albanians claimed independence from the Serbian province of Kosovo, where they were the majority ethnic group. A new civil war began, which was characterized by the deportation and massacre of the Albanian population. With the intervention of NATO troops, the conflict came to an end in 1999. Kosovo was then under UN administration, albeit with its own government and parliament. In 2001, Milosevic was arrested and went on to stand trial by the International Court in The Hague on charges of genocide. The following year, Yugoslavia became a republic of Serbia and Montenegro. In 2006, the Montenegrin population opted in a referendum to separate from Serbia. In 2008, Kosovar Prime Minister Hashim Tachi announced the unilateral independence of Kosovo. The changes implemented by Gorbachev also caused problems for the USSR. Gross domestic product per capita income and productivity all fell. With this, the popularity of the Soviet leader began to fall. In August 1991, Former Communist Party leaders, allied with military sectors, attempted a coup d'état. The population protested in the streets and the copists retreated. A month later, the Baltic republics Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania declared themselves independent from the Soviet Union. In early December 1991, the presidents of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus created the Commonwealth of Independent States. Shortly before the end of the year, Gorbachev resigned from the presidency and declared the Soviet Union extinct. The country split into 15 independent nations, 20 autonomous republics and 8 autonomous regions. With the exception of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, the new countries joined the CIS. With the end of the Soviet Union, ethnic minorities engage in nationalist and separatist struggles. In the Russian Federation, for example, Chechnya had aspirations to be an autonomous state. Russian resistance is due to the oil fields in the region, which are on the route for Russian oil exports to Western Europe. In Moldova, Georgia and Tajikistan, there were also this kind of aspiration. Since 1992, Armenia and Azerbaijan had disputed the possession of Nagorno-Karabakh, a territory with a majority Armenian population located in Azerbaijan. Although the polarization of the Cold War period has ended, Russia is still important in international diplomacy and maintains positions that are often at odds with those of the United States. The Russian's desire to maintain its own sphere of influence resulted in support for opposing parties to those defended by the Americans in recent conflicts in the Middle East and in the crisis in Syria, in the Balkans and in Ukraine.